When you have to choose between two idiots, you're guaranteed to choose an idiot. And that's the problem with our electoral process. We have such polarizing politics that you're never going to be happy with the candidates that are ending up at the top of the ticket. We need to really look at the system in general and how do you create candidates that really attract the minorities of different principles and ideologies without ending up at the polar opposite ends of the spectrum. Politics has gotten more and more polarizing, and regardless of what side of the election you're on, you're feeling icky about the direction that it's going. And part of the reason is when you have a two-party system and a winner-take-all election process, you're often stuck picking between two options that don't feel really good to you. Luckily, there's a new process called ranked choice voting that aims to change all of that. It makes the electoral process much less divisive. It makes it easier to feel like your vote is always counted. Let's imagine we're picking where we want to eat, and we use a traditional winner-take all process and we may have choices in candidates like salad pizza hamburger hot dogs when you run that process using a traditional winner-take-all model the candidate that has the most votes will end up winning in this case hamburgers has the most votes but if you take a look at the results there are two candidates who had votes whose votes were essentially discarded so if you look at the bottom two candidates salad and hot dogs their votes really didn't contribute to either the winning of the first party or the second party now let's take a look at a ranked choice voting election. Same idea in the first round, you're really choosing who your favorite is. You're choosing your favorite candidate of all the options. But the thing that sets ranked choice voting apart is you also choose your second and third option. What this means is if your first candidate doesn't win, your vote doesn't get discarded. Your vote goes and trickles on to the second and third choices that you've selected. So let's take a look at this in practice. In the first round of the election, we have the same results as the first time around in the winner take all election. But the difference in ranked choice voting is that the winner is not called after the first round. We don't have a majority win. So we don't have over 51% of the people voting for hamburgers. So what we do is we go on to the second round. And for the second round, we take the candidate that had the least amount of votes and we look at who they voted for in their second position. So in this case, there was a lot more votes for pizza. Those votes didn't get discarded. And you can see that now we have a tie between hamburger and pizza. So what we do is we look at the next vote as well. So the least amount of votes is next carried by salad. And when we discard that vote, those votes trickle on to the next stage as well. And now you can see that pizza had the majority of votes having over 51% of the vote. And so ranked choice voting is a really straightforward process and it makes it much easier for your vote to feel counted. So I created a simple spreadsheet to show ranked choice voting in example. And so you can play around with this and see exactly how it works. Here you can see the instant runoff. And as you go through the instant runoff, you eliminate the vote with the least amount of votes. So here we have hot dog with the least amount of votes. You can see in round two, we have that tie again. We eliminate salad with the least amount of votes. And again, we have a majority winner in the third round. So you can see exactly how this works. And I've linked the spreadsheet in the description below. It ensures that your vote is both counted and that politics is less polarizing. It encourages candidates to both be in the middle and it encourages candidates to reach across the aisle and campaign in areas where they may not win the traditional first vote, but maybe they'll be the candidate for the second and third vote. It makes it much less polarizing and it encourages candidates to have positive campaigns, which I think is a good thing in general too. So ranked choice voting does a great job of encouraging people to vote for who their true favorite candidate is. And it also ensures that by doing so, they're not throwing away their vote. Ranked choice voting isn't a new concept. It's actually been around since the 1800s. It was brought over to the states, but it hasn't really gained a lot of popularity until more recently. Over the last couple of years, it's started to trickle into more and more elections. And now you're seeing in counties, municipalities, cities, states, congressional races, state races. And even this year in Maine, they're using it for the presidential election as well. Ranked choice voting is a great step in making politics less divisive and more inclusive. I'm really excited about ranked choice voting. It was on the ballot this year for Massachusetts. And regardless of who you're voting for, make sure you vote. I'm Greg Reyes. I talk about technology, entrepreneurship, and design. I'll catch you on the next one.